This is Yoshimi, Arafona palmahensi. They are native to most of the southwestern U.S. There's a lot of these guys in Oklahoma. Probably the most docile genus of tarantulas as a general rule, the phonopelmas. Also one of the most slow growing genus. We've had this hopefully little girl for about two years and she's not even halfway grown. Her adult size, she'll be about six inches diagonally this way. So, probably about that big leg span. And a very fat bodied, furry tarantula when full grown. One interesting thing about them in their native habitat, which is mostly prairies and grassland type ecosystems, they'll dig a burrow and often cohabitate in it with a certain species of toad who is believed to benefit the tarantula by eating the ants that can really cause problems for a tarantula uh, during a molt when they're soft and vulnerable, the ants can literally eat them to pieces. If a female were to make an egg sac, that could also be jeopardized by the ants. And so the toad, by eating the ants, helps the tarantula out, and the tarantula doesn't attack the toad. And presumably the toad gets the benefit of a tarantula guard dog. hunted for a phonopelmas in Oklahoma and put a blade of grass down a known tarantula burrow only to have a toad jump out at us, which was kind of startling. As far as I know, they're the only known species of tarantula that does anything like that. Further testament to how calm and gentle they are. Right after a molt, her head here will be the most suede looking peanut butter shade. It's really pretty and her legs are very black. And her abdomen there is covered with kind of chocolate colored hairs. Almost all of Phonopelma species are some shades of brown, for the most part. Right, a lot of them look a lot alike. But this is the Phonopelma hensi, the Oklahoma brown, though it is found in many neighboring states as well. Sometimes, during the right time of year, you will see mature males wandering in Oklahoma and other areas. They're just out looking for a female to mate with. You'll pretty much never see a female or a baby because they will be in a burrow where they spend pretty much their whole lives in the burrow or at the entrance of it unless they are trying to find a new burrow where they get flooded out or chased out. Mature males constantly roam and wonder. You can find them in roads, ran over, <clears throat> on the side of your house, on your porch.
times they would gravitate towards a, a porch light, presumably because of the bugs that are drawn to it. Because like all tarantulas, they're essentially blind. They gain all of their sensory information about the world from all their little hairs, which vibrate and move the slightest breeze or disturbance. Also, they have chemoreceptors in their feet that allow them to essentially taste what they're walking on. I'm going to zoom in on the eyes. If she sits still. Tell me if you get it. No, I'll have to wait till she's Anyway, this is one of one of the most likely tarantulas to be encountered by Americans in their native habitat, and they are one of the shyest, most timid tarantulas in the world. In captivity, we've noticed every year, sometime in the fall. These guys burrow down and seal up their burrows. I think they respond to the cooler temperatures and the shortening days. And they're ready to hole up for the winter. And they often won't eat for months. They'll stay sealed in their little chamber. And eventually they'll molt and resurface and be ready to eat. in a red circle and trying to zoom in on them. What, her spinnerets? Yeah. Where she makes her web. As soon as I say something, she tucks them back. You should be able to zoom in on her spinnerets now. She keeps them working the whole time to lay a little line of silk. Also, um, like most tarantulas that live in the Americas, she has a special hairs here on the abdomen that she can use a back leg to rub them off into a small cloud. And these hairs are irritants to smaller animals 
They might try and prey upon the spider. You know, I think dogs are smaller. If it got in the eyes or nose or mouth, it would cause an itching and burning for those animals. <clears throat> and maybe for some people as well. But Aphonopelmas, as a genus, have some pretty mild hairs compared to other genuses genre, like uh, Brachypelma. You should show it home. That's Yoshimi Arafonopelmahensi.